Hey everyone, welcome back to Eric's Everyday Watches. As always, if you like this video, if you find it helpful, please do me a favor, hit the like button and consider subscribing. The watch we're looking at today is this field watch from Citizen, model BM8180. Now if you wanted to pay for retail price, you could head over to the Citizen USA site and pay $200. Or simply go over to a gray market seller such as Joma Shop or Amazon and pay around $140. Now this watch has a stainless steel case and is rather on the small side, coming in with a diameter of 36.8 millimeters, not including the crown guards. If you include the crown guards, the diameter jumps up to 38.5 millimeters. We also have a short lug to lug distance coming in at 43 millimeters. This case has mostly a polished finish to it. The side, the top, and the bottom of the case, as well as the side of the lugs, are all a high polish. Only the top of the lug has a brushed finish to them. Meaning, of course, this watch is going to be a magnet for fingerprints. And that's a bit of a disappointment. Personally, I think a field type watch could do with a little less shiny bling and have more of a rugged appearance. But that is just my opinion. As far as fits and finish, the edges and corners of the case have a nice squared off utilitarian look to them and yet they're still smooth to the touch. The bottom of the lugs and inside of the lugs are always slightly sharper than the rest of a watch and this field watch from Citizen is no exception. Still, I would say that the finish in those areas are very acceptable as well. Sitting on top of that case, we have a flat piece of mineral crystal. And that brings me to my first gripe about this watch. As some of you might have already noticed, I have scratches on this already. I've had it for less than 24 hours and it is scratched. Now I've considered not doing this review because I know a lot of people, myself included, likes to see the pretty pictures of watches. And this one, this one is scratched. But I thought about it and you know, this is exactly what I want my channel to be. Sharing what I learned from everyday use of a watch, the good and the bad. So here we go. I was reaching around an artificial Christmas tree, plugging in the lights when it scratched. Now I don't know how much more everyday use you can actually get than that. The needles on a tree are plastic. Now, albeit a hard plastic, but still, it's not like it's a wire brush or anything like that. So yeah, I'm extremely disappointed that it's scratched, and I'm also a little surprised. Unfortunately, it's not like I can compare the mineral crystal on this watch to a mineral crystal on another watch. It's not as if I was doing some sort of reaching around the artificial Christmas tree test that I do with all my watches. But now I kind of wish it was a test, so I had something to compare this to. All I can say is that in the years I've been wearing a watch, I've never scratched a watch to this degree. Not even close, nowhere near it. And that raises some questions, you know? I mean, should this crystal have scratched that easily? Maybe I should have known better. Maybe. Maybe watches have no business being in close proximity to any sort of artificial tree. Maybe the next time I'm around a tree or even see a tree, I'm going to put my watch in my pocket just to be on the safe side. We're going to move on. On the back of the case, there is a screw down case back with Citizen's Echo Drive globe motif etched into it, as well as text that reads 10 bar water resistance and Japan movement. Inside the case, we have Citizen's Echo Drive E101 movement, and that is rated at plus or minus 15 seconds a month. And once it's fully charged, it runs for approximately six months. This movement also has an insufficient charge warning, meaning the second hand will move in two seconds intervals to let you know when the battery is low. Now the rechargeable cell for this watch is in the center of the dial and normally you would never see it because it blends in perfectly with the black dial. Only in direct sunlight are you able to see it. The crown at the three o'clock position is five millimeters in width and three and a half millimeters in depth and might have seemed large for the size of a case if it wasn't for those crown guards flanking it on either side. As it is, it seems to fit in seamlessly with the case. The crown has a nice textured pattern to it, making it easy to grip and pull out. 
It is a simple push pull crown with the first position adjusting in the day and a date and the second position adjusting in time. The day and a date are printed black on white and they are very legible. The day and date does seem to be set in a little further than on non-solar watches because of the need to have that rechargeable cell incorporated into the dial. The window itself is outlined in white with rounded corners which helps to give it a classic and sporty appearance. Let's talk about the dial. We have painted on Arabic numbers, white on a black dial. The number 3 has been replaced with a day-date window, and the number 12 has been replaced with a downward pointing triangle. On the outside track, we have minute markers with Arabic numbers on the 5 minute intervals, along with smaller triangles facing inwards. It is a very clean looking, no-nonsense sporty dial. At the top, we have Citizen logo and EcoDrive printed directly on the dial. Down below, we find the letters WR and the number 100 referring to the water resistance. The skeleton pencil shaped hands are outlined in metallic and are filled with loom. The second hand is also loomed and offers the only touch of color on the dial. At night, we see the Arabic numbers 1 through 11, the large triangle at the 12 o'clock position, the smaller triangles on the outer track, as well as the hands are all loomed. It's nice to see they added a little loom on the second hand. Definitely a welcomed feature. The second hand is a nice length and while it doesn't quite touch the minute markers, it is long enough to touch the small triangles on the outer track. As far as alignment to the minute markers, on the first half of the dial it does line up perfectly. On the second half it is just slightly off. So that is something to consider when looking at this watch. The nylon strap that comes with this watch is 18 millimeters in width and has a really good feel to it. It's very pleasant looking with the horizontal stitching near the lugs. Definitely has that military rugged flair to it. It's roughly two and a half millimeters thick at its thinnest point and even has a backing applied which appears to be leather. Even with all that going, I simply don't like this strap. The keeper closest to the buckle is not movable, and I struggled to bend the strap enough to actually feed it through. The strap itself is rigid and unflexible. It might break in over time, but not having a comfortable strap to begin with only means you're less likely to actually wear the watch. The rivets used instead of the normal adjustment hose looks fantastic, absolutely, hands down. But in everyday use, I had two issues with them. One, the metal buckle gets caught up on the rivets when trying to slide the strap through. Besides being a hassle every time you put the watch on, this is going to create hot spots or shiny spots on the matte gray rivets. My second issue with these rivets is usability. Since they are much larger than the typical adjustment hose in a strap, they need to be spaced further apart. And this means I don't actually get a good fit on my 7 inch wrist. Even though there are 7 rivets in the strap, the watch is either too tight or a little too loose for me. So let's list out the specs for this watch. We got a mineral crystal, Citizen's E101 movement, a diameter of 38.5 millimeters, a thickness of 9.3 millimeters, lug width 18 millimeters, and a lug to lug distance of 43 millimeters. Finally, let's wrap up by going over the pros and cons. For pros, it is a solar watch using Citizen's E101 movement. It is highly legible both the time and the day date, and it is simply a good looking dial. For cons, all that high polishing means there's going to be a lot of fingerprints to deal with. There is that mineral glass, obviously, I had issues with it. If you decide to get it, beware of artificial trees. And the strap, it is just a little too rigid and those rivets make it difficult to put the strap on. So here are my final thoughts. For $140, you're getting a good looking watch with a good movement inside and a good fit and finish from a manufacturer that's been around for a long time. For me personally, because the experience I had with the mineral glass, I am gonna scratch this one off my list. This has been Eric from Eric's Everyday Watches, reminding you to buy the watch that you love and don't pay any attention to what anybody else says or thinks. This is your watch collection. If you like this video, if you find it helpful in any way, please do me a favor, hit the like button and consider subscribing. I'll see you in the next video.